Hi, please read along with me to the story called The Little Matchstick Girl, adapted from the story by Hans Christian Andersen, retold by Jack Lowry. Once upon a time, there was a little girl who lived with her family in an old battered house in a town in Denmark. The townspeople didn't know her name, so they just called her Little Matchstick Girl because she sold wooden matches in the center of town. It was the last day of the year, and the little girl woke up early when she heard the wind howling into the bedroom where she and her entire family slept. Even though they were always stuffing old rags, newspapers, and straw into the holes and cracks in the walls to keep out the cold and wind, the house was always cold in wintertime. And when the wind blew, she could hear it whistling through the cracks. She got out of bed and looked over to the other side of the room where her mother and father lay sleeping. Her father was still sick and every day he seemed to get weaker. Her mother took care of him and the little girl's one brother who was one year old and two sisters who were four and seven years old. The little matchstick girl was ten years old and ever since her grandmother had died a year earlier, no one had time or energy to care for her. She sold matches to make money so she and her family could eat. She stepped into her mother's slippers, which were too big for her, and she put on a ragged coat and wrapped an old rag around her neck. She had no hat, no gloves, and no shoes or boots. She quietly opened the bedroom door and closed it behind her. Then she shuffled down the hallway and into the kitchen. The kitchen had no food, just a bundle of matches she needed to sell. She put the matches into her coat pocket and walked outside. The sun was bright, but the cold wind blew hard. She hoped that one day she would have enough money to buy a hat and gloves and a good pair of boots to replace her mother's slippers. And perhaps she would even have enough money to buy a scarf and a warm coat. Her stomach growled. Food would be the first thing she would buy. She and her family hadn't eaten for two days. When she reached the center of town, she saw a man standing on a cobblestone sidewalk and eating a biscuit while waiting to cross the street. As he started to cross the street, he tossed the last bit of biscuit on the ground. She hurried over to pick the piece up, and as she got closer, she saw the bread covered with mud. Though she was very hungry, she knew that eating the mud-soaked biscuit would probably make her sick, so she turned away and started walking down the middle of the sidewalk. Matchsticks! Matchsticks for sale! Keep your body warm! As she delivered her lines, she held out her matchsticks with one hand and put her other hand inside her ragged coat. She would switch hands when the hand holding the matches got cold. As she shuffled down the sidewalk in her mother's slippers, she tried to look up and make eye contact with the townspeople. Most didn't look down at her. Those that did would give a tight smile and look away. Did they feel pity for her? Were they embarrassed for her? She wasn't sure. And why did the townspeople look away from her so quickly? When she had reached the end of the busy part of town, she crossed the street and walked back toward the center. It was now ten in the morning, and though the sun was shining brightly, the bitter wind seemed to make the townspeople walk faster than usual, and almost no one looked down at her. It was the last day of the year, and perhaps people were in more of a hurry than usual to do their shopping and get home to prepare for parties and celebrate the beginning of the new year. While waiting to cross the street, she stood on the edge of the sidewalk and looked both ways and then looked both ways again. She started to walk quickly and a team of horses pulling a carriage came around the corner and headed toward her. She ran to get out of the way, and both of her oversized slippers came off. She kept moving because she didn't want to get hit by the horses and wagons moving in the other direction. She made it to the other side of the street, and even though her bare feet were stinging from the cold ground, she was thankful she wasn't injured. 
she had to get those slippers. While she was waiting for the traffic to clear up, she noticed two boys were pointing at her and giggling. Ignoring them, she looked out into the street for her slippers and saw them lying about five feet apart in the middle of the street. When there was a break in the traffic, she hurried out and picked up the first slipper, and as she stood up, the two boys ran past her. One of them snatched the other slipper off the ground and crossed the street. She ran after him, and when she reached the other side of the street, she yelled out, Please, let me have my slipper. It's too big for you, he turned and said, and besides, we need something to play catch with. He turned and ran away, laughing with his friend. She put her left foot into her only slipper, and she started walking down the sidewalk, facing the sun, which wasn't very high in the sky this time of year. Every time her right foot touched the cobblestones, she felt pain from the bitter cold of the stones. When she reached the end of the busy section in town, she bent over and rubbed her right foot so the pain would go away. Then she put the slipper on her right foot. Matchsticks, matchsticks for sale. Keep your body warm. No one wanted to buy the matchsticks. When she got to the end of the busy section of town, she crossed the street again and headed back towards the center of town. Hours later, when darkness arrived, she still hadn't sold any matches. She was hungry, cold, and sad. She didn't want to go home with nothing. Her poor father would only get sicker going another day without food. She decided to keep trying. If she could just sell enough matches to buy a piece of bread, she could take it home to her family. Something is better than nothing, she thought. So on she went, calling out to the people as they walked by. There were less people on the street now, and sometimes she even approached people who were waiting to cross the street and asked them if they would like to buy matches. Most turned away from her without even saying no. An hour later, almost no one was on the street. She didn't want to go home with nothing to show for her efforts. She was so hungry, and she was starting to feel weak and dizzy, so she decided to rest for a few minutes and get away from the wind. She walked down one of the side streets, and after a few minutes she saw a corner formed by a high fence resting against a red brick house. She thought the corner might protect her from the wind, so she walked over to it and sat down, resting her tired legs. She put both feet in her one slipper and took the rag around her neck and wrapped it around her feet so she wouldn't have to feel the cold wind biting at her feet and ankles. It was dark in that corner. She took a match out of her pocket and struck it against the brick wall. The match sizzled and sputtered and burst into flame, warming her cold, stiff hands. She looked at the brick wall of the house, and in the glow of the light she thought she could see a big iron stove with shiny brass feet and a shiny handle on its door. She felt like she was inside the house, sitting in front of the stove, and her whole body felt warm from the fire. Then the image started to fade, and she looked down and saw the flame of the match moving closer to her forefinger and thumb. She dropped the match to the ground and watched the light get smaller, crawl to the end of the match, and disappear. Amazed by the vision of the oven, the little girl decided to light a second match, and when the match sizzled and caught fire, the brick wall of the house turned into a window and she could see a table set with roast duck and mashed potatoes and biscuits, everything steaming and hot. She could smell the meat and the butter and the bread, and she imagined she was entering the room and picking up a plate. She reached for a warm biscuit, and then the match went out. The light was swallowed by the darkness. The window became a brick wall, and the aroma of the food disappeared replaced by the cold, swirling air. She lit another match. The light swallowed the brick wall, and
and she felt like she was standing in front of a wonderful Christmas tree, similar to the one she had seen through the glass door of the rich merchant's house on Christmas Eve. But the tree she was looking at now was even more spectacular, with over a hundred burning candles on its branches, along with many beautiful shiny ornaments. The candles gave off a glow of warmth that wrapped around her like a thick blanket, and the light from the candles was so bright she could see the beautiful pictures in the room. As the match went out, she imagined the lights from the candles flying up to the sky and becoming stars, giving light to her. She saw a shooting star, and she thought of her grandmother. Someone has just died, she whispered. Her grandmother had told her that when a star flashes down from the sky, a soul rises to heaven. She struck another match. As the light hit the wall, she could see her grandmother, smiling, radiant, full of love and warmth. Grandma, she cried, please take me with you. I know when this match burns out, you'll disappear like the warm stove and the roast duck and the biscuits and the Christmas tree with the burning lights and sparkling ornaments. The fire on the match started to fade, and she dropped the match to the ground. She wanted to keep her grandmother near her, so she took out the whole bundle of matchsticks and scraped it against the wall. As the fire blazed, she held the burning matches in front of her and looked at the brick wall. The glow was so great she imagined the summer sun had come out. She saw her grandmother appear again and smile at her with a sparkle in her eyes that made the little girl feel at peace. Her grandmother reached out to her. The little girl walked toward her grandmother and embraced her, and together they flew up to the sky and the little girl no longer felt cold or hunger or sadness, for she was with God. The next morning, as the sun began to rise, a group of people were walking toward the center of town, and one of them noticed the little girl sitting down, leaning against the wall of a brick house. Her eyes were closed, and there was a trace of a smile on her face. As the people looked at her, one of them noticed the burned matchsticks in her hand and said, She wanted to stay warm. Some of them looked away in the distance. Some of them looked down in silence. No one imagined how wonderful the girl's last moments on earth were or how happy she was in heaven. The End Okay, I know this was a sad story, but I hope you liked it. And if you would like to hear other stories that you can read along to, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay. Stay happy, keep learning, and have a great day. Bye-bye.